Welcome back. Now, the South African Reserve Bank, that's the Saab, will mark 100 years of existence this week. And since it was established in 1921, the institution has steered through the devastating impact of the Great Depression, the introduction of a single currency, and the introduction of the RAND in 1961, among others. Now, to mark this milestone, the bank will launch a commemorative coin later this week. Uh, but to just uh, help us reflect and understand the the history and, of course, function of the South African Reserve Bank, as well as talk about the commemorative coin that will be launched. We joined by Pradeep Maharaj, who is the chief executive responsible for currency management at the South African Reserve Bank, as well as Hani Mamabulo, who is the managing director at the South African Mint. Thank you so much to both uh, Pradeep and Hani for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Sakina. Thanks for having us. Uh, Pradeep, let me start with you. Just in terms of, you know, taking us uh, through the history of the Central Bank of South Africa um, and also explaining to lay South Africans what exactly the Reserve Bank does. The, the Reserve Bank was established in 1921, June of 1921. At that time, there were a host of imperial banks that were operating in South Africa, each issuing their own money. And in 1921, uh, the central bank was created where the function of creating money and distributing money was taken away from these commercial banks and brought into the central bank. Uh, ever since, we have been producing uh, the, 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 the currency for South Africa. And since democracy, um, the, the, the constitution of South Africa establishes the Reserve Bank and makes its primary mandate to protect the value of the currency in the interest of uh, uh, sustained economic growth, balance and sustained economic growth. Um, and so that is our primary function today in, 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 in a democratic South Africa is to protect the value of the currency, the buying power of the money in your pocket. Uh, and that's our primary function. Of course, the bank also has other functions normally carried out by central banks, one of which is to produce the money that you carry in your pocket that you use to, to transact on a daily basis and, um, and other functions that, that uh, are, are carried out by the Reserve Bank. Mm. And, you know, because and I'm glad you explained that, because very often we wonder about how the Reserve Bank's uh, Reserve Bank services actually translate to normal South Africans. You know, uh, uh, what is it that a normal South African can latch on to and say, OK, when we talk about the Reserve Bank, this is what the institution does. And also questions around the independence of the bank. Those always come up, Pradeep. Uh, please tell us more about that. And, and, and how it is structured at the moment. Again, you know, we are very, very fortunate in South Africa that we have such a powerful document as the Constitution. And, and we had very learned uh, uh, men and women who, who crafted that uh, in their wisdom. Firstly, they created the Reserve Bank. Thereafter, they went on to, in the Constitution, guarantee its independence. Uh, and so we're one of the few central banks whose, whose independence is guaranteed in the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution asks us as a central bank to carry out our functions without fear or favor. Those are the words used in the Constitution. And so, you know, uh, we, we, that is now used as a standard for other central banks elsewhere in the world. Uh, where the independence of the central bank is paramount to it performing its role in society. Mm. And um, I'll come back to talk a little bit more about that and, you know, some of uh, the comments around the South African Reserve Bank and where it is currently. But, Hani, I want to bring you into the conversation uh, just to tell us about, a little bit more about the commemorative coin, which is set to be launched later this week, marking the centenary of the Reserve Bank.
All right, we seem to have um, lost honey there, uh, but uh, we'll come back to honey. Uh, Pradeep, it uh, takes me back to you and, uh, you know, what we were talking about, the Reserve Bank, its independence, and as you explain how fortunate we are to have a bank uh, that is set up the way that it is. Uh, but there have been calls in recent times, for example, to nationalize the South African Reserve Bank. Oh, what sort of um, impact would nationalization, for example, have if uh, we were to go that route as a country? We, we must not conflate the issue of, of the independence of the central bank with the ownership of the central bank. Um, historically, in 1921, when the bank was formed, because uh, the commercial banks gave up their function of producing money uh, and was taken over by the central bank, each of those banks then had shares in this central bank. And that's where the shareholding in the central bank dates back to. Over the years, that has changed. And, and, and um, uh, the, the central bank is currently, you know, the shareholders are private citizens uh, and, and institutions in South Africa. The ownership of the bank doesn't impinge on its independence. The independence is guaranteed in the constitution. So it doesn't matter who owns the central bank. None of the shareholders have any rights related to the, to the core activity of the bank, core mandate of the bank, which is to manage, uh, to, to protect the value of the currency in the interest of balance and sustained economic growth. And that they must carry out without fear or favor. So it doesn't really matter who owns the bank. And that is why, as a central bank, the governor has, has gone on record as saying that, you know, uh, uh, we leave the ownership issues and the private, the, 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 the nationalization of the bank to the politicians to deal with. We will continue with our core mandate, which is protect the value of the currency, in interest to balance, sustain growth. And we will do that without fear or favor, because that's what the Constitution requires of us. Mm. And, and, and just going forward in terms of um, the Reserve Bank and the role that it plays, is there anything that you would say, Pradeep, uh, that could be improved upon, uh, that the Reserve Bank could do that could benefit South Africans in the long term? In the, the Reserve Bank has a proud history of 100 years this week of serving South Africans with distinction. Um, we are regarded as one of the leading central banks in the world, uh, and we are very proud of that tradition and the, 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 the heritage that we have and the reputation that we have. Um, we strive to do all of, carry out all of our functions to the best of our abilities, and excellence is at the core of our, our, our being as central bankers. Uh, everything we do, we want to excel at it. Uh, is there room to continue to improve? Absolutely. You know, we are responsible for the currency uh, function in the bank, Honey and myself and, and two other colleagues. And, and in that regard, we continuously looking at ways in which we can improve the design of our banknotes and coins, the distribution of our banknotes and coins, the storage, and, and ultimately making sure that you as a citizen of this country as somebody who's living in this country who has to use this, this, the RANDs, um, uh, fully trust it, that the quality and the integrity is of the highest standard. Now, we continue to be looking at ways of improving that and, and making it better. And, and of, at the same time, ensuring that we make it more efficient because ultimately you pay for the production and the distribution and the storage and the destruction of money through bank charges, ATM withdrawal fees, um, uh, deposit fees. And, and so the, the efficiency of the supply chain is uppermost in our minds. And if you just look at South Africa as a developmental state, Pradeep, um, in this 100-year history of the South African Reserve Bank, has it adapted to actually make sure that it actually is at the center of, you know, trying to accommodate that uh, developmental mandate that the state has? Uh, our current governor and our previous governor, uh, previous governors uh, uh, since democracy have, have, been, have been strong proponents of 
of the mandate of the bank and protecting the mandate of the bank. Because if we do that well, we create a, a solid foundation for, uh, um, for the South African economy to operate. Clearly, we're not the only actor in it. Uh, we, we're only responsible for monetary policy, which is protecting the value of the currency. And we are responsible for financial stability. Uh, we're responsible for running the, the, the national payment system and managing exchange controls on behalf of the Treasury. Uh, but our primary mandate is protecting the value of the currency. And in doing that, we ensure that that inflation is managed, but then allows a, 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 an element of macroeconomic stability for South Africa to then achieve its economic goals. We are not the only player, and we're not responsible for all other elements of the, the, the functioning of the economy. And so we need to focus on our mandate to ensure that we do that well, because when we do that well, we, we're making sure that at least we are contributing to this uh, economic trajectory of this country. I believe we have Honey back with us. Honey, um, if I can just quickly uh, speak to you about the commemorative coin um, and if you could just tell us about it and, you know, uh, it's set to be launched this week. What more can you tell us? Um, thank you, Sakina. I think first before I speak of the commemorative coin, it's just to share the role of commemorative coins in any economy or as part of minting industry. It's mainly to remember historical events in a country and also people of significance. For the Mint uh, to be launching this coin in support of the Reserve Bank uh, uh, this coming Wednesday and celebrating 100 years of the Reserve Bank is a very important occasion. The design of the coin marks the movement or in history of our currency. It has a tiki of 1923. We also showcase one of the Mandela coins that we commemorated the life of a living legend being Nelson Mandela in 2008. And also um, we have the Cape Honey Bee. As you know, um, um, bees signify life and it, it signifies 100 further years of a bank, and to be doing this and launching this under a constitutional democracy is one thing to remember. Mm. And, and, and just the process involved uh, when new coins are created, uh, Honey, you know, and, and, and how is this one different from others that we've previously seen in terms of its makeup? Um. You know, as I've mentioned, uh, Sakina, uh, we've had uh, coins start from design. Uh, a, a lot of people would not be aware that it starts from a, a paper design. And uh, in this particular one, uh, uh, we use design forum, a, a, a design forum. And then uh, there's a product uh, development team that then uh, 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 creates dyes and molds. And then it moves into full production uh, through the metal. And as you've noted, the five rand coin is a bimetal uh, coin, which highlights security for the coin. The design of this particular coin is very detailed, which talks to design uh, excellence at the mint, as well as the ability to manufacture a coin that not only is aesthetically pleasing, but it also is secure and uh, uh, holds value. And uh, in the process, so the the process uh, really uh, uh, for the coins uh, it, it, it go it starts from design. And as you recall, while in in this one uh, with the commemorative coin for the centenary, we did not use the public. But in the SA twenty five, uh, when we were marking uh, the, the the democracy and celebrating twenty five years of constitutional democracy and highlighting the Bill of Rights, we engaged the South African public. We used young design artists, the born frees, and for their interpretation of what freedom means. And South Africans got to utilize those coins in circulation. I think while I'm here and talking about the coin itself, which I can't wait to use and hold in my hand, it's to emphasize 
that beautiful as the coin is, um, um, excellently designed, the value thereof is the face value of a five friend uh, that stores the value and you can exchange that for goods. It holds no value higher than that. Mm. And just finally, how many of these uh, will be uh, minted or uh, will this uh, form part of our normal range of five rand coins? Yes, they will form part of the, the normal range of five rands. Per annum, we make around 50 million five rands. And to mark the centenary ce celebration this year, we've uh, 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 produced 8 million of these coins, which will be in circulation. Well, thank you so much, uh, both uh, Pradeep Maharaj, Chief Executive Responsible for Currency Management at the South African Reserve Bank, and uh, Hani Mamabulu, who is the Managing Director at the SA Mint, uh, talking to us about uh, the uh, commemorative coin and, of course, the role of uh, the South African Reserve Bank, among other things, as uh, the central bank commemorates their centenary this week. And we'll have uh, more interactions around this particular matter throughout the week. And I think uh, the Reserve Bank Governor will, Wednesday is it? I'm not sure, too sure. I'll have to check it again. Uh, but uh, obviously there will be uh, some a bigger commemoration uh, event later on in the week regarding the centenary celebration of the South African Reserve Bank. We're going to take a quick break, then we'll have your headline news. Uh, Professor Tulio de, de Oliveira will be speaking to us in the next half hour as we unpack uh, the latest regarding COVID-19. Please stay with us.